customer has asked us to help them convert a high purity storage tank to a regular storage tank. So it needs to tie into some of their other processes that are already existing. So they send us a PNID, which is the same as a blueprint, but it, none of the routing and the directions that are going are logical whatsoever. <laughs> it just shows us the order of operations for the flow chart for each one of these lines. It shows us where it originates and where it terminates. And we'll take these drawings and from these drawings, I will sketch up a quick um, isometric drawing, which is more or less a 3D drawing, which just freehand kind of quickly that I can read. And then from this section, I will, if awarded this project, I will draw out good drawings and send them off to our draftsman. And he will draft those onto a Barkman mechanical isometric sheet that we can then follow all of our weld maps on that sheet as we build the, the lines and we complete the project. hand drew um, some isometrics really quickly in the field and then I'm making those a little bit more clear for myself so that I have them uh, a good clean set that I can hand over to my draftsman and he can actually put those onto Barkman Mechanical drafting paper, um, isometric paper. So I used a set of PNIDs, which is a piping and instrumentation diagram that was given to me from a plant that we were working for. And they have highlighted a couple of new lines that they want to add. And the routing that's shown in these has nothing to do with what it's going to look like in the field. I can just utilize this as it shows me my starting point in their process and my tie-in point in their process. And it shows me the different instrumentation um, whether that's a high point vent, a low point vent, a control valve, a uh, pressure relief valve, any of those different things that they need in that system, which in this specific system, they'll have all of those things. Um, and it shows me the order of operations, how they have to fit. And then I can then in turn build the piping to match the diagram that they need. So after I've quickly sketched it up in the field, I'll come back and I'll clean that drawing up a little bit before I send it to our draftsman. So I am currently drawing this up uh, so that he can read it and there is no question about what needs to be there. And the funny thing is, it's almost like learning a different language as you, um, as you start to learn what all the different symbols mean as you're doing this. But this is kind of what our day would consist of. Now, it's best to draw these as close to scale as you can, but scale is not as important as just including the different dimensions that you would need as you make, as you build the line. Okay. And there's a nice 3D drawing of what that line will look like in the field. Wow, what do what do all the symbols okay. mean? So, um, typically right here, I would write TP, because that's a tie point, and this would be our tie point to our pressure vessel. This valve is existing. This bow tie is a valve. This represents a valve. Now, Technically, that valve is a ball valve, so it would actually show the ball and then handle orientation as well. So we'll leave out of there. We'll have a two by one reducer coming out of there. Now this is threaded on this side. We're going to add a 90 degree turn down. I didn't finish drawing that off 100%. So it shows that it's a socket weld 90 with the two little cups. So we're coming out. So technically this is going west, dropping straight down, runs into a set of flanges. 
as it leaves the set of flanges, we've gone from threaded here to a welded here. That's why we need a set of flanges so we can screw this in and then we can be welded the rest of the way through and we still have a break point at the flanges. So we'll come down and we'll have a low point uh, drain right here and a collection area, almost, uh, we call them a drip leg. It has a, a valve at the bottom, a gate valve, and it has a plug in it. Um, as it cut off of this T, it will head back to the east and we'll 90 back. We'll have a T that comes off here and loops around for a PSV at the bottom so that it never overpressures because the product that will be in this line will be um, nitrous oxide. Um, we'll have a control valve set here and typically I will have to call out the size of those. This one, excuse me, this is a one inch, 300 pound. Good thing for wide out. <laughs> That line will run down. Um, it'll have a, um, a coupler in it because it's a little longer than 20 feet in this run. So we'll have to couple those lines together to maintain our socket weld. And then we'll 90 back to the west again and drop down and hit a line that's already existing. And that'll be our tie point into that line.